Welcome. This is thy 28th global warming myth buster. And the myth I'm going to bust today is that if you cannot forecast the weather a few days in advance, then you cannot possibly forecast the climate decades in advance. Let's start as we always do with the myth conception itself. It goes something like this. Meteorologists cannot forecast the weather more than a few days in advance. Therefore, forecasting the climate decades from now is impossible. Thus, predictions of impending climate doom are merely propaganda. All three of these statements are incorrect. First, we should decide what is weather. It is the atmospheric conditions at a single location. It only applies to a short period of time, usually hours at most days, and it can change very quickly in minutes or in just a few hours. What makes forecasting weather so difficult is there's lots of different types of weather. There's cloudiness, snow, bright sunshine, rain, cold, heat, floods, drought, mist, hurricanes, tornadoes, and wind. Now each one of those types of weather have different characteristics and so you need different information to be able to forecast them. For example, you need the pressure, the temperature, wind speed and direction, the humidity and precipitation. You need to be measuring that over a large area of the surface and doing it continuously. And you need to measure it at different altitudes in the atmosphere using things like radio sondes and satellites. So now what you do when you've got all that data is to put it into a set of equations like this. You're dealing with the dynamics of gases, the atmosphere in other words, and that's a fluid dynamics problem. And these are some of the basic fluid dynamics equations. Now, every one of these terms here probably has a set of equations of its own to derive that term. Then you have to solve these simultaneous differential equations, which is no easy matter. And to add to this, it's a chaotic system. So a small perturbation in one place can lead to a very big change somewhere else. So this is no easy problem. Well, given the complexity, it's amazing how well the forecasters do. This is a plot of the accuracy of various lengths of forecast and how much it has improved over the last 40 years. 40 years ago, the three day forecast was just barely over 80% accurate and is now nearly 100%. The five day forecast was about two thirds accurate and is now over 90% accurate but they're all showing some level of improvement. Now this will depend on which parameter you're forecasting. It's a lot easier to forecast temperature and sunshine and things of that sort than opposed to the amount of rain that somebody's gonna get or the path of a hurricane. Now let's take a look at what climate is. Climate is basically weather averaged over a specified region, usually a quite a large one, over a long period of time, usually decades, and so because there's so many different measurements average over such a long time, it only changes slowly because there's a great deal of inertia in the results. So what sort of measurements are needed to be able to forecast climate? Well, you need to monitor changes in the atmospheric composition. Also changes in albedo, for example, the amount of ice and snow cover in a particular area. What the El Nino-La Nina cycle is doing and how intense it is. You need to look at changes in solar activity, changes in cloudiness, and major volcanic eruptions. Now these are all long-term phenomena and occur on different timescales and many of them are not forecastable. So what you do there is you take a statistical average rate for each one of these and fold that into your forecast. And if you forecast over a long enough period, most of these sort of fluctuations in the climate will average out and you're left with a climate trend. Here are some examples of climate data. You can have temperature maps and see how they change as a function of time. You can have precipitation maps and do the same. You can have long-term trends shown in, in one or more parameters. Uh, here's the long-term trend for total solar radiance, the amount of energy that the Earth receives. And as you can see over the last 40 years, it has barely changed. If anything, the trend here is slightly downwards, which would say the sun is helping the Earth to cool somewhat. So the whole climate issue really comes down to a energy balance problem. If the energy in is greater than the energy out, you get a warming planet. If the energy in is equal to the energy out, you get a stable climate. 
And if the energy in is less than the energy out, then you get a cooling climate. And so it comes down to the three main energy transfer phenomena called radiation, convection and conduction. Now in a gas, conduction does not work very well, so we can basically ignore that. So in the Earth's atmosphere, the two major problems are convection and radiation. And convection is the uh, most important thing in the lower parts of the atmosphere. And radiation is in the important factor high up in the atmosphere. And that's where the cooling or heating of the Earth is primarily occurring. Well, let's for a moment return to the, all those factors that we need to forecast climate. So to cover all the different possibilities that this represents, the models use a series of scenarios where you take the best and worst atmospheric composition and the same for the temperatures and the albedo and the cloudiness and things of that sort. And you just fold those into your model and you end up with a whole series of models. And when you do that, you end up with something like this. This is a model being run with a whole bunch of different scenarios. Each scenario produces a different temperature regime. The red line here is the actual data. And you can see that the red line falls within the envelope of all the models. So something is right now. But the point here, this gets into another issue that or another myth that is often propagated here is that 99% of the models are wrong. Well, if you're running 100 different scenarios, then only one of those scenarios can be correct. And so you will get 99% of the models that are wrong, but that doesn't mean that the models themselves or the physics is wrong. In fact, you can test that by going back in time and doing what they call a hindcast. And you can see that the models follow that red curve right up until the modern day because they know all the parameters that go in the models and the models reproduce the temperatures that have been observed. So it means that the physics in the models is in fact correct because of those hindcasts. It's because of the uncertainty in the uh, parameters that we have for the various scenarios in the future that you get this diversion. And as you can see, this divergence increases with time because the uncertainty on those parameters gets larger and larger over time. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? Weather is hard to forecast. It's a chaotic system that changes rapidly, not only in time, but from place to place. And various factors, microclimates can affect the local forecast and change it uh, very radically over a short period of time. Climate is a simpler problem. The short-term chaotic factors average out over a period of time, like decades. Uncertainty comes from the unpredictable factors, but you can use as various numbers of scenarios to bound those unpredictable factors and forecast fairly reliably what the climate is going to do over 10, 20, 30, even 100 years. If you see somebody saying that the weathermen can't predict the weather a few days in advance, yet they expect us to believe that climate can be forecast decades in advance, send a link to this video, tell them they're full of nonsense, and until next time, goodbye.